Hello vinyl community, back to my daily playing list. So let's start with some really easy listening. And I'm talking about a compilation called Aerial Pandemonium Ballet by none other than Nilsson. Now this is of course a famous pop musician from the 60s that uh, made a quite a dent with a whole string of successful singles. Probably everybody knows uh, his recording of Everybody's Talking. Now, this is an interesting album for a particular reason. And that's um, when he kind of started uh, the second leg of his career as a pop artist at the end of the 60s and the early 70s actually. Um, the recording company wanted to put out uh, his old stuff again and uh, his early two albums, which you can both see here. And so he had this idea, well, the music uh, style and the, the, the popular music has developed in the last five to six years and I kind of don't like the results from back in the day. Why can't we just take the tapes? Why can't we obtain them? Uh, let's go into the studio with it and kind of let's break it down and try to rework it again and update the music, which was... Um, this may not sound like something very original today, because today everybody is doing it. But what happened was that uh, basically one of the very first remix albums came to life this way, which is this one. So um, it may not be um, so obvious while you listen to it, but uh, it's it's an interesting approach to to the music remastering and it was something that usually was not done uh, around 1971 I think when this came out. Uh, let me have a look which year that was actually I think in 1972 yeah so this came out on RCA Victor and uh, so uh, So that's kind of the historical place this compilation album has in the canon of modern music. Something very different is uh, the one album by Keats. Now Keats is a project uh, that came to life in the mid 80s and is uh, short-lived uh, band that was originally well initi initiated or suggested by Eric Wolfson and produced by Alan Parsons and what you have here is basically Peter Bardens of Camel on keyboards and the rest of the band is the whole Alan Parsons project gang so you have Ian Berenson on guitar you have of course David Payton on bass guitar and vocals you have Stuart Elliott on drums and Colin Blundstone from the Zombies singing. Um, so um, how does it sound? Well, it is uh, through and through a pop slash rock album of the 80s. So uh, this is not exactly prog rock. Um, it's very poppy, it's very accessible, but it's also very much dedicated to perfection in terms of uh, musical production of sound. I mean, it's it's engineered by Parsons, so you know what you get. Um, and there are some really nice tunes on it. Even a cheesy photograph of the guys together. So uh, also, I when I bought this, I got it with this nice uh, Electrola sort of facts-like uh, story about the musicians and where they came from. It's actually three pages long in German. Always like these little discoveries. So yeah, Keats is well known amongst Alan Parsons Project fans because once uh, the project ended, uh, kind of the looking for a second tier material started and so this is sort of uh, one of those non-canonic Alan Parsons Project albums. Yeah, I've already shown one album by Toshinori Kondo a couple of days or weeks ago. This is his album Metal Position. 
uh, Toshinori Kondo and Ima. Yeah, it's another example of very uh, left field, uh, progressive sounding, uh, jazzy fusion album. Toshinori Kondo is a trumpet player. He was a no wave session musician in New York in the late 70s. So uh, this came out on Jaro or Yaro, probably. Uh, yeah, another great Japanese album. And certainly not the last Toshinori Kondo album I'm going to show you. So to stay, to stay in a sort of a New York atmosphere, here is Body and Soul by Joe Jackson. Another seminal album by this great musician. Uh, so this is another album that's basically all about New York, I would say. The cover is kept in style with classic uh, jazz albums of the 50s. And it's a brilliant, it's a brilliant uh, LP, this one. It comes with a lot of liner notes. And a cool label. So I've always liked this one. It starts with the verdict. Uh, it has songs like uh, a Be My Number Two on it and uh, Happy Ending. So this is certainly one of my favorite albums by Joe Jackson. I love it. I bought this one new. Um, after the heat, Eno Mobius Redelius. So it is still in the good old cellophane. I just opened it at the side for now. This came out in the late 70s on Sky, of course. But uh, this here is a very, uh, very true and very nice reissue by Bureau B. And uh, it comes with this two language liner notes in German and in English by Asmus Tietjens. And some more photographs with the three guys. So um, this is of course uh, one of them albums um, that Eno recorded with the Cluster people in Germany. It's uh, in a sense it's a follow-up to the famous Cluster and Eno album. It's kind of cool, I always felt like this photo, it's sort of a late afternoon on a hot summer day. Actually already an early evening with the light fading. While well, this is almost night with the very last beams of light. So are these albums complementary in any way? Yeah, I mean it doesn't hurt if you listen to them through one after the other, but uh, after the heat is a little bit different, I would say. Um, it's a little less ambiente. So there's a touch of um, post-punk uh, spice to it, while Cluster and Eno, in my opinion, is much more in this uh, ambient realm. So in the end, I want to show you one or two CDs that I've listened to. This is the, um, one of the early albums by Tam Perdu called Athanor. And it's one I've always really liked. There are some nice, cool electronic ideas on it. I mean, this album came on uh, Discordia, which was an underground label in the early 90s. It's from 1992. And uh, that's when I bought it. Yeah, and I like it. It's a cool sound. Um, I mean, it's the kind of album, if you put it in your CD player and you are surrounded by people, that's how you get people interested in the music. I mean, there's something uh, eyebrow raising about it, so you kind of ask, oh, what's that? Tom perdu. Well, maybe and finally this one. I just had a 
short listen to this. Uh, this is something I bought over 20 years ago. It's probably the craziest compilation I ever bought in terms of, uh, uh, of the compiling of music. Um, it's quite insane actually. This is, uh, this is called um, Myth Number no. 4 and it came out on Sub Rosa. And um, the music on it, I mean, the first two tracks are by Sheb Mami, which is an Al Algerian Rai musician. This is some of his very old catalogue. I don't know if, even if you get these two tracks on any of his official albums. So this is very early stuff by him. The next one is a track by Coil, Another Brown World. So probably some other uh, scatological uh, exploration by Coil. Then there comes Some Morning When the Moon Was Blood by Current 93, which is sort of an industrial, uh, super dark, ambient track. And then, from the archives of Saprosa, a Jewish ceremonial, probably recorded somewhere in East Turkey, uh, with the music of dervishes. How does that come together on one CD? Amazing. So that's it for now. I hope this was somehow interesting to you. And uh, if yes, uh, don't hesitate to uh, push the little red button. Um, this certainly helps me to understand what I'm doing here. <laughs> so um, have a nice day and see you.